Hello, this is Geotechland, and today I'll be looking at the Raspberry Pi 4 alongside the Raspbian OS. And I'm going to be doing a general review of this, um, especially in comparison to what you can experience on desktop version of Linux. So to start with the basics, uh, obviously on the Raspberry Pi 4, you can easily browse the web, which is what most people need, the average person. And also you have an office suite. Sure, it's not, you know, Microsoft's office suite, but you just need something very basic. Then LibreOffice should be just fine for even um, a college student or something like that. The other thing I wanted to cover specifically about this OS is the appearance settings. You don't really have too much of a, there's not a real easy way to change much of the theme. Just some very basic stuff that you can change here. Uh, the default layout and theme of the OS is fine, I think. Still looks somewhat dated, but not too much. You can change some of the colors around here. But again, nothing too comprehensive here. Beyond the basics, one thing that's very popular uh, to do on computers is gaming, right? With the Raspberry Pi and this OS, you're pretty much limited to the hardware. And so one thing that's very popular is RetroPie is installing pretty much something I think it's available as an OS that you install on the Raspberry Pi 4 and you use it to play retro games PlayStation games SNES games and 64 games I think even GameCube games but I don't think those play too well on this tech um, so mostly retro 90s games and stuff like that now of course you can do this on desktop Linux as well and Obviously, because it's desktop Linux, you have a lot more choice in terms of hardware. With the Raspberry Pi, you're limited to just the Raspberry Pi. The other thing more specific to this OS is um, how you find apps. The app store here is really more of a repository than a store. So again, not necessarily the best experience. When you search things um, like a screen capture um, app, for example, it doesn't really find a screen recorder app so you pretty much have to know the names of the apps that you're looking for in order to have any luck finding things here at first i didn't think there were any options for screen capturing on raspberry pi but just had to do a little bit of digging and i did find that there's at least two one of them is kazam which i've used on i think it was um zorin i don't know i've always had issues with kazam it didn't even work in this in this os here I would click the app to open and it never opened. It just kind of stayed. Oh, it's almost like it didn't do anything. But of course there's this um, record my desktop app and that one did work pretty good. So you could capture the screen on this device, on this hardware, so that's very good. That's something a lot of people use, especially content creators. So it's very helpful to have that application. And so here's record my desktop. I didn't really test the sound quality due to how I record external capture device that I use. I don't think sound works too well, so I didn't record with sound, just the video here. And actually, if I left it unchecked, um, the sound checked here, it had an, an error here. Like it would just record for like a second and then say that an error occurred. So I left that unchecked and then I was finally able to capture a recording. And it took a while sometimes for this to render took a good five minutes or so and then there may be an issue with playback maybe some missing codecs or something but i captured this 14 second video and it looks all purplish here but at least you can you know record the screen and i'm pretty sure something like this is fixable with some tweaking but now that i have some video here it's time to test kaden live and I don't think Kaden Live looked this bad when I first loaded up this OS. I'm kind of forgetting because I, I think I messed around with the theme and it made it look like worse. And I tried uninstalling the app and it just kept having the same theme here. But it's obviously not in a very good condition to, to work with because the theming made it difficult to use the app here. But again, I think that's something that's tweakable at least. So the next thing I wanted to test here is whether Kaden Live actually works um, as it should, and and it does. Besides the the theming issue here, 
Now, of course, again, we're limited by the Raspberry Pi's hardware. And so it's going to be interesting here how much or how long it takes to render this 14 second clip. All right. And so you can see here, it looks like it's going to take two to three minutes. And that's just to render a 14 second video. So in terms of the software, yeah, it's since Caden Live is open source, I would... I can't imagine it being too hard to just port it over to ARM, you know, the ARM architecture. And it has been ported and for the most part it works and does its job. But because you're limited by the Raspberry Pi's hardware, I don't think this is a, a good device for creating videos or for content creation in general. So it took 2 minutes and 29 seconds to render a 14 second clip. So I got curious and I tried testing, unloading, um, almost a minute long video here. So let me name this testy2 and project it to take 13 minutes, but I'm gonna skip this and instead skip right to the end here. All right, so it took nine minutes and 41 seconds. So for a one minute video, that's just not gonna cut it, right? All right, so let's review here. Had the Raspberry, Raspbian OS on the Pi 4 versus just desktop Linux in general know OS's in mind like Manjaro or Ubuntu based. So Raspbian OS running on the Raspberry Pi 4 is an ARM based so it's a completely different CPU architecture compared to what you can find on desktop Linux or traditional x86 based uh, CPUs. And so for Raspbian OS you can do the basics right which I covered in my previous video. You can use it as a web browser, an office suite, an email client. And for a lot of people, that may be all they need. And so for 35 to 50 bucks, obviously, plus the accessories, this is um, this might be an option for people. Obviously, you can do the same thing on desktop Linux and arguably a lot faster and a lot more smoother just because you have more powerful CPUs and GPUs to work with. Now for gaming, on the Raspbian OS, you're limited to RetroPie and something like a, the basic Minecraft game. And again, this is not necessarily an OS limitation, but more of a hardware limitation because of the Raspberry Pi. And again, obviously it's not intended to compete with high-end stuff anyways, right? For being, you know, 30 to 50 bucks. Obviously gaming on desktop Linux, you have RetroPie, but you also have Steam Play and Wine. It's much more viable for gaming and again, I, I would imagine Wine, something like Wine can be ported over to the ARM-based architecture. It's just that it, it would kind of be pointless if there's no hardware to take advantage and, and actually use it. I guess it could work for, you know, basic Windows programs, not necessarily games like um, maybe like Notepad++ or, or just like using, I don't know, I guess Adobe Photoshop, although I doubt the Raspberry Pi 4 would handle that hardware-wise. And as a workstation, like a video creation and screen capture, again, the software is there. You do have a screen capture and Caden Live to edit videos, but the hardware limitation here would not make it very usable. And of course, you have no issues really running that on desktop Linux because you've got the hardware to run it. So all in all, the Raspbian OS, again, it's a pretty basic OS. Even though it could use improvements, you know, like its software store can be improved on. Theme and customization could be improved on. Uh, ultimately, you're limited by the hardware and can only really be used, uh, you know, to teach, you know, basics of computers, of programming, and cannot really replace more higher end use cases and hardware. Not to mention, there's a lot of apps, like let's say, like someone mentioned in my comments, like Discord that you really can't find on ARM, ARM-based um, computers like the Raspberry Pi 4. Even though you can access Discord on the web browser, having those apps available on Linux, um, on desktop, you know, x86 space, just makes life much easier. So all in all, Raspberry OS and the Raspberry Pi 4 for 30 to $50, I still think it's a good value. Obviously, if you're trying to use it for gaming or a workstation, it's definitely not recommended, but overall it's still a very good value and still a very useful device. So if you like this video and enjoyed this comparison, please like, share, subscribe, 
follow me on all the social medias and i will see you all next time